Akai Professional released the MPC 2.9 software and firmware for its full line of MPCs. Let's check it out. What's up YouTube? Welcome to the NoiseReduction.com YouTube channel. My name is Booker Edwards and in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the new MPC 2.9 software and firmware for the MPC lineup. This latest update of the MPC software has a very cool and I think very useful new feature called Drum Synth. Um, as you know the MPC series is a sampling drum machine and because of that, it can pretty much be any instrument that you want it to be. It's a clean slate. You can sample anything into it that you want and manipulate those samples and actually produce your music or sound design or whatever you want from those samples. Of course, uh, when you purchase an MPC, it comes pre-installed with some samples, libraries, uh, drum programs, and things of that nature. And of course, you can buy expansion packs and all of those types of things. But now with the 2.9 update, you have a drum drum synth plugin inside the software and I'm not saying just in the software on the computer but inside the MPC in standalone you have a drum synth plugin and that plugin will give you the ability to design your own sounds um, it utilizes uh, samples and also FM synthesis and we're going to look at all of that and give you a, uh, a run through of just how this works inside the MPC so let's get right into it <coughs> So the first thing you're going to need in order to utilize the drum synth in the MPC is a track inside of a sequence. So I have a brand new clean sequence here in my MPC X. Um, everything just set to the default 120 beats per minute, two bars, um, it's an unused sequence, unused track. And so on this track, what I need to do is change the track type from a drum program to a plugin. To do that, I just hit this little uh, plug here that represents the plugin track. And so now that I have a plugin track instantiated, uh, what I want to do is on that track, select the drum synth plugin. And I do that down here um, in the plugin program area. And I'm just going to double click right here or double touch where it said uh, tube synth and scroll down so I can see my drum plugins. Now in the MPC 2.9 software, you get eight separate drum plugins, drum synth plugins, plus a drum synth multi-plugin. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on in this video. But as you can see, you have drum synth clap, crash, hi-hat, kick, and right in the middle you have multi. We'll come back to that again. Uh, you have percussion, ride, snare, and tom. So you have eight different drum synths, individual sounds to use, plus the multi. So let's start by just uh, loading the drum synth kick. Most people would start with the kick sound. And once you load that sound in, automatically the synth is loaded onto that track. And if I play, you can actually hear these sounds. Let me put my headphones on. And I'm going to, right now, um, as you'll see in a second, the sounds are chromatically mapped across um, my pads. So I'm going to go up into bank C. So you can hear the sounds a little bit better. But if I want to edit and manipulate these sounds, what I need to do is go into the program editor. So I'm going to go here to my program editor. And once I get here, you see the graphical user interface for the drum synth plugin. Now, I'm going to utilize the kick drum synth to kind of give you an overview of all of the individual drum synths that come installed in 2.9 because they all pretty much have the same graphical user interface. However, um, as the video goes along, I will show you the graphical user interface for the others, but I'm going to go into detail in this one because it has all of the uh, parameters and features that you'll see in all the rest, plus some that you won't see in the others. First thing you see over here on the far left hand side is the uh, graphic that represents uh, the drum synth. You see a, a picture of a kick drum there um, and of course it says kick here underneath it. 
And each one of the drum synths, the sounds are created by uh, modeling. And the modeling, you have different types of models to choose from. Um, by default, the kick is using what's called the 80 model. But if I double touch here, I can see a list of all the different models that I can utilize to create sounds for the kick drum. I have 80, 90, driven B, hybrid, trance, natural A, natural B, hard one, hard two, and clipped. So I'm just gonna stay up here at 80. Next to that, the next parameter you see is something called glide time. Now, uh, glide time as a feature that a lot of people have been uh, wishing for in the MPC when they're doing like bass lines or 808 bass lines where they want, um, when they go from, say for instance, a higher pitched 808 down to a lower pitch, they want that note to bend to get down to the other. Um, kind of a, a portamento effect. You can do that now very easily with the drum synth, and I'll show you how to, to do that. You're gonna utilize the glide time here, but you're gonna also have to make some settings over in the parameters. And so you see over here on the right-hand side of the screen, you have these eight parameters to choose from. Um, and these change depending on what model you're using for the engine for that particular uh, drum sound that you're using. But Specifically, in order to use the glide, we need to increase the hold time, which is the second parameter over here on the right. And I'm going to utilize my Q-Link to uh, adjust the hold. And it's this Q-Link here. I'm going to set the hold all the way up to 100%. Now, the Q-Link knobs are automatically mapped to the parameters inside uh, the drum synth, and that's on all the NPCs that are available to utilize this software. However, um, of course, the MPC X has the 16 uh, Q-Links right here on the, on the side, so you have access to all 16 of the parameters that are um, accessible, whereas on, say, for instance, the MPC one the MPC Live, or the MPC Live 2, they just have uh, one set of four physical Q-Link knobs, and you would have to bank over to get to your other 12 to give you a total of 16. But here I have all of them uh, with these OLED uh, screens to let me know what they're controlling. So I set the hold up to 100% and I'm also going to turn the decay up to about 70 to 75%. I'm going to put it right at 70. And I'm going to adjust my glide time um, from 10 milliseconds, which was the default, up to right around 388 or 400 or so. And now what you'll see is if I play that higher pitched bass, that kind of 808 it's got kind of a longer tail on it now because I increased the decay. And then if I play a lower one behind it, it doesn't bend down to the note. So the key to this is you need to basically have the notes overlap, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is play this one and then play a lower one and you hear it bend. So the notes have to overlap in order for the glide to take effect. If not, they just kind of choke each other out, those notes play. But if I do this, you get the bend. And so if you're creating that within a sequence, you need to make, you know, a lot of times when you trigger the note, you just get these very short kind of uh, staccato, if you will, uh, MIDI notes that don't overlap. So I can show you real quickly in uh, grid view. Let me go down a, a couple of octaves here and draw in just two quick notes here for demonstration purposes, right? And um, if I play this now, I'm going to take this note and uh, select it. Oops. And uh, let's transpose it down some. So this is more effective. Let's go down some more. Okay, so now you see the glide is on. I'm using the drum synth. That's what you're hearing, but it's not bending. Remember, those notes have to overlap each other, right? And so I've selected both notes, and I'm going to go here and say edit end, and I'm just going to increase the end on both until this one overlaps this one. And now we get... Didn't quite overlap. 
They overlap each other and now we get So you hear the note bending now And of course you can make other adjustments to it to make it sound exactly the way you want it to sound inside the interface But that's what the glide time is there for um, And you're going to find that the glide time is unique to the kick drum sound inside your choices for drum sense um, The next thing you have here is one shot and so one shot is just like with samples. Uh, one shot means that when I trigger a pad, all I have to do is touch that pad and it's going to play the duration, the full uh, envelope of the sound by just touching it. So you get the complete delay sustained all the way until it just goes away, right? If I take one shot off, then if I just tap this note, the note chokes out, right? If I hold it, now it's more of a bass sound. It's not even really a drum. It just continues on and on. So that's what one shot is. Let me take my delay uh, back down some. Okay. Uh, next you have chromatic. Now what chromatic does is chromatic takes that sound, that sample, and it maps it and pitches it all of the notes across your pads chromatically, right? So you have basically bank C bank D and once we get up to this top row in bank D we get to the highest pitch and it's just that same pitch into the other banks. So, uh, you know, you can go down to bank A, but those sounds are really, really low and you're going to need something uh, to carry those frequencies, some type of subwoofer to hear those. Um, some of them may not even be usable that far down, but in B you start to get to lower ones that you can use and then you get into C, you move on up. Now, the cool thing about it being mapped uh, chromatically and pitched like that is, of course, you can play um, kind of those 808 bass lines or uh, pitched drum bass lines um, that don't necessarily have to be 808, but you can do just bass lines if you uh, set it up right um, by manipulating the sound so it doesn't have as much attack, so it doesn't sound like a kick, but more like a bass. But the other thing that's an advantage of having that chromatic uh, scaling of the notes is that you can go back to your main window and with the pad perform, oops, let me get out of that. With pad perform here, uh, this is what tells the notes how to map across the keys or the pads, if you will. So when it's on off, it just puts them chromatically because that's the setting that's inside the plugin, right? There's, of course, is a chromatic setting here also, but if you just leave it on off, it's just every single note going up the pads. But if you go to notes, now you can actually set the pitches to a scale. For instance, you see it's set to C major scale um, and it's set to negative one, the, the octave of negative one. So I'm gonna go here to bank C Let's go to bank B. Bank B, all of the pads that are lit red represent the note C. And so if I play from this C to this C, you'll hear it go up uh, the scale in C major. So that comes in very handy because now you can use that to uh, play your bass line in key with your song. Um, and sometimes that's a challenge when you're working with samples. Um, if you don't have it mapped across your keyboard correctly, you have to go in and do a lot of manipulating and setting the root note and all of those types of things to get the key mapping perfectly so that it's in key with the rest of your melodies and um, chords and all of that type of stuff. But here you can take advantage of pad perform to you know change the key from C to E. Um, you can change it from major to natural minor to harmonic minor and so forth and so on, right? Uh, so I, I think that's really cool feature to have to work alongside your drum synth. But enough of that. Let's get back into our drum synth. 
in the row below that, the first thing you see is velocity. And velocity by default is set to 100%, which means that the pad will respond to the velocities from very soft touches to very hard touches. Now, what the velocity controls, um, for the most part, is tied to the volume that gives you expression and dynamics as you play. Um, but if you know anything about MIDI, you can actually set velocity to trigger and control a whole lot of other things. If you say, for instance, uh, set this velocity uh, percentage down to zero, what do you think will happen? You probably think if I play this, you won't get a sound at all, but that's not true. If I play it now, no matter how soft or hard I hit it, it's only going to give me that one expression of the velocity, which is like the hardest hit. It's almost the equivalent of if um, I set the MPC to full level instead of having it to be velocity sensitive. Uh, and if I increase it to, let's say, half 50% here, then you'll see I have some expression, but it's, it's, a, it's a lowered range of that expression, the dynamics. So you get some soft stuff and then a little bit of hard. So if I want that full dynamic range, I set it at 100%, then it can be expressive. Now next to that, you have velocity two. And velocity two is tied to the target. Right now, velocity two is set to zero and the target is set to none. The way this works is you can set the velocity that you play to control or to trigger one of these eight parameters that you see over here on the right hand side. And so I think uh, one of the best examples I can show you of that is if I uh, set this velocity to up to 100% plus 100%, right? And then I set the parameter, you have the choice between parameter one all the way through to parameter eight. I'm gonna set it to parameter one. And parameter one through eight represent these eight parameters that you see here. Now remember, those eight parameters are dynamic and they change based on what model you have set. So you see it set on at 80 and you can see those parameters. If I go to 90, you see the parameters change. If I go to driven, you see they change and they change at hybrid, trans, so forth and so on. So that's why when you uh, see the target here, you see it just say parameter one, parameter two, so forth and so on, instead of tune, hold, decay, because the parameters change based on the model. So I'm gonna set my velocity back up to 100 plus 100%, and I'm gonna set the target from none to parameter one, which is, in this case, is tuning. So now what this means is, if I play this pad right here, if I play it softly, It'll play that note at its normal pitch, but if I strike it hard, you hear the pitch raise based on the tuning here in parameter one. I use that as the example because it's most evident right now and it's the quickest way to kind of show you what's going on there and how you could use that. But I could also use that to affect, uh, like say for instance, let's do parameter seven, which is noise, and I'm going to turn the noise up. And so now if I hit this softly, you don't hear much noise, but if I hit it hard, you hear kind of that, uh, that rough attack that's on it now. That's the noise that's at. Let me turn the noise back so you hear, so here it's gone now all together. So if I play it softly, you don't hear that. But if I strike it hard, you start to hear that, which gives you more expression and more dynamics to your performance. Let's turn the noise off. Set this to none and set this back to zero. So that's how you use velocity two. The next parameter you have is volume. Um, by default on the kick drum, the volume is set to 70%. Now, the, the main thing I want to tell you about this, of course, you can use this to turn the kick up and turn the kick down. But keep in mind, gain staging. Uh, this is just the first level of gain for this particular kick drum synth. Um, but 
when you're utilizing um, any of the individual drum synths, the drum sounds, the kick, the snare, the individual sounds, right? Remember that when you go back to the main screen, they exist on that track by itself. So on this track, track one, I have just this kick sound that I'm using. And because of that, it's utilizing that as a program. And when you go into your mixer here, the program mixer has another level setting and panning for that particular sound. So if I go here, I can turn it up and down here also. And of course, it leaves the program and it also goes to the master. So that's another stage of gain that you need to be mindful of. In gain staging, you don't want any of the stages to um, overcompensate for the other. So just be mindful of the different gain stages as you're working through um, with the drum synth. But this is a place you can turn this up and down. If you double touch it, you also can uh, use this to uh, turn the volume up and down. The next thing um, in the interface here for this kick drum synth is the eight parameters. And I've kind of touched on those already Ready, as I talked about um, like the target area but as you can see you have eight parameters and they are tied to the model and because in model 80 uh, the eight parameters that are available are tune, hold, decay, sweep, harmonics, click, noise, and noise color but again if I go to say for instance 90 I get tune, hold, decay, sweep, punch, harmonics, click, and noise and then if I go to driven, I get a different set of parameters, right? So it all depends on uh, which model you're utilizing as to what parameters are available to you. Uh, but these parameters are tools that will allow you to go in and to basically customize the sound. Because by default, you start with a sound, a basic sound, and then you can go in and tweak that sound to be what you want. Say for instance, if I wanted to change the overall tune, tuning of this, you'll see under tune is actually showing me uh, the root tune is at 49 hertz in the note of G. But if I go here and I adjust my Q link for tuning, I can adjust the pitch of the entire kit. Right? And so you, you see those different things available to you. Again, like say for instance, if I wanted to add noise, um, I could go to the noise, add noise to the whole kit, and then I could change the color of that noise with the eighth parameter. Uh, it gets brighter up there and kind of has a uh, low pass filter when I come back the other way. Uh, let's say, for instance, I wanted to add some more. Um, click to it to kind of give it the uh, attack sound uh, or the, the the beater sound of the kick drum. Um, I could go here to click and add more clicks so you, that click that beater part at the beginning. I can bring that back to where it's more rounded so it has less of an attack. So now the click is completely gone. Sounds a little bit more like a rounded 808. So you have those parameters um, available to you. The last thing you see over here on the right hand side is the effects column. And you'll see under the effects column, it says transient, distortion, EQ, and compressor. And these buttons here on the far right hand side basically allow you to turn those effects on or to bypass those effects. So say for instance, if I wanted to turn on the transient effect, I would turn it on there. And what the transient effect does is it allows you to shape um, the sustain and the attack of the drum. If I want to edit that effect, what I would do is go here to transient and distortion and touch there and now I see the graphical user interface for that particular effect. So let's say for instance, I wanted to make this kick um, a little bit more uh, short and have less of a tail. Of course, um, I showed you where you could adjust the decay, but I could also go here in the transient and change the uh, sustain, which is this Q-Link knob here. And you hear how that gets shorter. I could also adjust the sustain the other way to make it ring out longer. Could also adjust the attack, give it less of an attack or more.
more of an attack. So that's how you can utilize the transient. Now, if I wanted distortion to be turned on, I would need to turn it on here, but the distortion parameters are inside this same graphical user interface, just over here on the right-hand side. So now I could take this sound, which I want to give some more sustain back to, and add a little bit of uh, distortion. So I'm going to turn the mix up, adjust the threshold a little bit, and the drive. All right. And then you also have EQ. So if I want to adjust EQ, you can see it's not in this graph graphical user interface. So I go to EQ in the compressor uh, user interface. And now I can see the parameters for that. In the first column here, you have all of your frequencies. You have high frequency, high mid, low mid, and low. In the second column, you have your Q for the high mid and the low mid. And then in the third column, you have the gain for high, high mid, low mid, and low. And so, for instance, let's say, for instance, if I wanted to take the uh, low mid completely out of this, I wanted to boost some of the low I could turn the gain up on the low a little bit here and shape what frequency is being affected here with this knob on my low take some of this high out so EQ built right into the plugin Finally, you have your compressor section over here on the right. I'll turn on my compressor. Um, and you basically have the basics of a compressor. You have your threshold, and your threshold is set here. I'm using the Q-Links a lot, but you can also use the touch screen, right, to adjust the compressor. Threshold. And then you have your ratio. And your ratio goes everywhere from one to one which is no compression at all, all the way up to 100 to 1, which is a brick wall limiter, meaning that no signal is going to pass over that threshold, right? 10 to 1 basically is where you start limiting. Uh, some people say 5 to 1 and up, but 10 to 1 for sure, and 100 to 1 definitely is a brick wall limiter. And then you have your makeup gain. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, you have your attack. Uh, so your attack time basically says how soon after the signal breaks the threshold do you want compression to kick in. If you want it to be very fast, I mean, as soon as it breaks that, the compression happens, uh, which could affect your attack for a kick. Um, or you could slow it down to allow the attack to come through and then to compress on the sustain part, especially like with the 808 sound. Uh, and you have your makeup gain. Because compressors turn the signal down, so if you want to make that signal up, back up to bring it back up in the mix, you utilize the makeup gain. And of course, if I want to turn any of these off, even though I have them set, compression's gone, EQ's gone, distortion's gone, and now transient's gone. So this bypasses or turns those effects on and off for the drum synth plugin. Now, the last thing I want to tell you about uh, this kick drum synth, and again, Pretty much all these things apply to all of the other individual drum part, drum synth plugins that are in MPC 2.9, um, is that you have presets. So I just started with the kick, and of course I showed you the models, but in each model has a collection of presets for each model. So if I go up here to where it says default, these are the presets, and I double tap it, you'll see the models that I showed you for the kick. You see 80, 90, driven 8, I think I called that Driven B earlier, but I think that's Driven 8. Um, hybrid, Trance, Natural A, Natural B, Hard 1, Hard 2, Clip, and Bass. Uh, and so, let's say, for instance, we go in 80, and as soon as I hit that, you see another menu come up. And in that menu, now I have the presets for the model, the 80 model, right? So I can go to Basic. And then I'll just go here, and then I can go through processed tape a tape b it's a trap the bouncer 
Low end shaker High pitcher So as you can see it's still using that same model But it's changing parameters and effects and things to give it a different sound, right? Tricky trips Future blast Grime scene Heavy lumber South 80 so forth and so on um, What I do want to show you is that say for instance we go back here and I go to something like um Let's get back out of the 80 model and let's go to the natural A. So instead of using an electronic uh, drum sound like an 808 that we're kind of creating here, if you wanted something that was more acoustic, uh, like a, a, a acoustic drum set, then you go to natural A. And if we go in here, you hear it sounds a lot more like a natural acoustic kit instead of a synthesized drum. So a whole lot of options there for you. All of those parameters that I just showed you, that's that's how you would utilize it in, in all of the individual uh, drum sets. But I want to show you the graphical user interface for those and kind of show you where there are some differences, things that are here but may not be there. Uh, so we'll go back to main. And I'm going to double touch here and go to clap and select that. And now go back to program editor. And so you'll see you have your models. Uh, it, but you don't have the same models available to you. This one you have noise, clap, and click, um, and you have one shot. You don't have chromatic and you don't have glide. You still have all your velocity settings. You can see your parameters. All of your effects are still there, and of course you can get to edit the uh, graphical user interface for your effects here. Right. So that's clap. We go back to main, double tap. We'll go to crash, select program edit again uh, crash sound you'll see the models again different models you have 80 90 noise complex band pass um, no glide and no chromatic right so it doesn't pitch up it's just that one sound all right which I, I don't think I mentioned with the kick let me go back to the kick now that I think about it. if I go back to uh, go back to the kick and we go back to the program editor. Oh, I didn't change the kick. Go back, main, kick, double touch. And now go to program editor. Uh, if you turn off chromatic, I don't know if I mentioned this. So, so with chromatic, it's pitched. But if I turn off chromatic, it just turns to one individual sound on all the pads. No matter what bank you're in. All the way up to bank H. It's that one sound. And the pitch of that sound is based on the tuning parameter here. And so, I don't think I mentioned that, so I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Chromatic on, it pitches it automatically. If it's off, it's just one sound. So, uh, let's go back to where I was showing you the different ones, the kick synths. I think we did crash, hi-hat. You'll see the model, one shot, no chromatic, and no glide, right? Your parameters and things are there. Uh, you have different models available to you, right? If we go, there's a hi-hat there. Go main, go here. We did kick. Let's do percussion. Now, on percussion, you'll notice that chromatic came back. There's no glide, but you do have chromatic because think of things like um, a xylophone, for instance, where it has pitches as you play up that per particular uh, percussive instrument. Um, so you do have those. Uh, you have different models. So something else I want to bring to your attention. You see the models here, Rim 9, Stick 8, so forth and so on. This is where the FM synthesis comes in. So down at the very last model available under percussion is FM synthesis. Um, FM synthesis uh, stands for frequency modulation synthesis, right? Um, basically, uh, without getting too far into it, it's basically taking the frequency uh, like a, a uh, oscillator that's a sub oscillator that's lower than frequencies that we hear and using it to modulate another frequency to create harmonics to go along with the, another sound so it's available here once you choose it as a uh, model for the percussion and then you can create very unique percussive sounds uh, utilizing the FM 
parameters here. So say for instance, if we go to FM tuning, FM depth, off, the depth way up. You can create some very interesting sounds. So it's a sound design tool. I implore you to learn how to create your own sounds. That's what's going to make your sound unique and have something different than everybody else. Don't just get stuck in the presets, which by the way, just like with the kick drum synth, there are presets for each model for each individual different type of sound, right? So keep all of that in mind, but be unique and go in and, and create some things that nobody else has. And once you create those different sounds, you can save them as your own preset simply by clicking this little floppy drive that's at the top, and then you can save it into your computer or directly into your MPC and standalone. I think I mentioned earlier that this is available in the MPC without the computer being connected at all. When you're just working in standalone, this plugin is built into the MPC software that's inside the MPC. So you don't have to have the computer connected. However, if you are utilizing the MPC software on a Mac or a PC, it's also available there and you have a very nice graphical user interface inside uh, the computer to go in and manipulate this with your mouse if you like. Um, let's go back here. And we did percussion. Just do ride. I just want to show them all to you. Ride, um, same thing. You have your model, no glide and um, no chromatic, but you have one shot and your model and your parameters, all of your effects. Go back here from ride. We get snare. Select that. So here in snare, you're going to see that you have model, one shot, and chromatic. So you can do your pitch snare. So when it's chromatic, right? And of course you got different models available to you, different parameters, same effects. All right, we go back to main. When we go down to Tom, select that. Program editor. The Tom can be chromatic also. You know, you have your Tom rolls and things of that nature. Um, different models available to you, uh, all your parameters, your same effects available to you, right? Cool. Let's go back to main one last time, and this time we're going to go here and let's spend some time talking about the drum synth multi. I'm going to select that. So when you select the drum synth multi, um, to, to best explain this, I'm actually going to back up a little bit. I'm going to, on this track, I'm going to select kick, say select, and then I'm going to create another track. So I'm going to go to track two. And on this one, I'm going to create a new plugin. So plugin two. And then plugin two, I'm going to create snare. And so I did that because what I want to demonstrate to you is that when you're using the individual drum sets for the individual drum parts like kick or snare or hi-hat individually, um, that entire track belongs to that one sound. So on track two, I have a snare sound. But if I go to track one, I have my kick sound, right? Track two, snare, and track one, kick. So if I'm programming, then I have to record my kick individually on track one and then come in and record my snare on track two. Now, if you're great with finger drumming or if that's how you program better, you rather have like a kit, uh, what you're going to want to do is I'm going to go to another empty track and I'm going to create another plugin. And this time on this track, I am going to utilize the MPC drum synth multi. Now, the drum synth multi, when I go to the program edit, you'll notice the graphical user interface looks just like it did when I selected the kick. So you may be wondering what's different. So what's different is now I have a collection of eight different drum synths in one. And so if you look at the pads, the first two rows are what we're utilizing, pad one through pad eight. Pad one is the kick sound, which is why you see um, the graphical user interface for the kick sound. Pad two 
is a snare though. And to see that graphical user interface, I just need to hit drum synth two here to update to my snare. Pad three is a hi-hat. To see that interface, drum synth three, there's my hi-hat with all the parameters, right? Four is another type of a hi-hat, kind of a ride. So if I go here to four, I see another hi-hat, right? Five is a clap. If I go here, I see the clap. Six is a tom or some type of percussion. So let's go here, go to six. We'll see actually it's tom, right? Seven is definitely percussion. So we go to seven, we see percussion. And eight is a crash symbol, and we can see the parameters for that crash symbol. Basically, we have the plugin, the individual plugins created into a kit all in one with eight sounds. Now, you may wonder why the names down here at the bottom just say one drum synth, two drum synth, three drum synth, so forth and so on, instead of kick, snare, hi-hat. It's because even though this is a kick, it doesn't have to be. There's now a drop down menu where it says kick. And if I double touch that, I can turn it into any of those available sounds. Kick, snare, clap, hi-hat, ride, crash, tom, and percussion, right? All right, if I change this to a clap now, it's a clap. It's not a kick anymore. So it doesn't make sense that this would say kick. It should say drum sound. I'm going to put it back to kick um, because by default, this is kind of the, the pattern um, or the combination of sounds that's useful or that's there. Um, and that can come in handy if you keep it that way. But you can manipulate it and change it any kind of way you want. And then you can save it as your own preset. So what you may notice, there are some differences in uh, what we're seeing, especially for kick. So with kick now, the parameters that are available, we have the same models available to us, but we no longer have glide and we no longer have chromatic because the kick just exists on this one pad. It does not exist across all the banks. This one pad in bank A, right? You can't even go to a different bank. It's just in bank A. All right. If I go to the snare, it, it looks very similar to what we saw. It's up. It doesn't have chromatic, right? Uh, if I go to hat, I think that looks just like it did when it's individually, so forth and so on. So the biggest difference is what you see um, here in kick because it doesn't have those two parameters. It's just one sound. There are some other advantages to utilizing the multi. If we keep banking over here after we get past drum synth eight and we hit it again, now we can see that there is a mixer. I go here, I can see the mixer for all eight of those individual sounds. And my Q-Links update, the first four knobs at the top represent the panning for one through four, and then the next four knobs below it represent the volume faders for one through four. So let's create a, a simple pattern here. I'm going to go back to over here so I can see my drum synth. And uh, I'm gonna go to main, and on this track, I am just going to type in about 90, let's do 95 beats per minute. Say do it. And I'm just gonna record in a simple drum pattern here. And I can utilize note repeat and all of that type of stuff. So if I want to put a quick hi-hat in here, double tap note repeat. Maybe add a clap. All right, so now that I have that really simple pattern in, uh, let's look at the mixer again. So if I go back to the mixer, let's say for instance, I wanna take this hi-hat and move it over to the right. So hi-hat. Move this one over to the left a little bit. Maybe turn that hi-hat down some.
maybe put that clap over a little bit too. Turn it down some. And let's say for instance I want to uh, take that kick and pitch it down so I can go back over to the drum synth and under tuning for that I can adjust the tune. So that just affected the kick because I'm utilizing, I selected the kick uh, drum synth GUI and then I utilized that to turn it back some, uh, to pitch it down some. Um, another thing in the uh, mixer, I just showed you the fader and the panning, but also if you touch mixer again, now you have the actual effects that you saw for each one of those parameters, right? So if we go to the drum synth, you see these effects here and the mixer. The second mixer touch shows you those effects to turn things on and off. So let's say, for instance, we turn on a little bit of distortion for our kick. And then we can go and edit that distortion. Let's go back to drum sim. And so, as you can see, now... This was drum synth one. If I touch it again, now I can get to those effects, transient and distortion. If I touch it again, I'll get to EQ and compression. So everything is still there. So I've turned on the distortion. Let's add a little bit of that in. And then next, so you have that bypass or turn on for all of those effects for all of the sounds that are part of the multi. And if I hit this again, now I can get to the sends. And you'll see that there are three send knobs for each sound. You have delay, diffuser, and a reverb. So let's say, for instance, I want to add a little bit of delay to the hi-hat and a little bit of reverb to the snare and the clap. So I'll play it. to edit those effects you go here to where it says send effects and now you can shape what those effects sound like so you have your delay uh, parameters here you have your diffuser parameters in the middle and you have your reverb parameters on the far right so if I wanted to adjust that reverb from a big stadium to something a little bit smaller I have modes here it can be a hall a room or a stadium or abstract so I'm gonna make it a room So you hear it doesn't ring as long. I'm gonna change the time. And maybe let's change the timing on that delay a little bit on the hi hats. So you have a lot of flexibility to make your tracks dynamic and very interesting, just built right into the plugin, just right inside of the MPC. You don't have to go anywhere else. It's just right here. The plugin is built right in and standalone um, or inside the software. Um, it's it's kind of crazy. Um, if I go back, let's get out of this and go back here. The cool thing about multi, um, of course, you got your eight sounds here, but because they uh, kind of keep this default mapping through the presets, if I wanted to experiment with um, what different kits sound like, uh, because you have those same preset options here. If I double touch this, you'll see we have preset categories. So for instance, I'll look under urban and let's start with it's a trap. So now I got that same pattern going, but I have different sounds because I have different sounds going on here. So I can go here and change to Lost in the Trap, the Bouncer, Low End Shaker, Trip. 
tripping trap. So you can go and spend just hours going through um, those different presets to get a different feel for your track um, to find something that you love. And then, of course, you can always save it and then come back to it later and utilize it in different productions. So that's my overview for the MPC 2.9 software update for the MPC product line from Akai. Hope you got something out of it. If you have any comments or questions, please uh, put them in the comment section. I try to always reply to uh, my viewers who comment on my videos. Um, and thanks for watching, man. If you like what you saw, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, click on that bell so you're notified when I upload new content. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.